Greetings once again. This week's video, how we make our girth belts. I've been asked a few times at the local cons, uh, once or twice at Dragon Con, and occasionally it'll come up on any one of the Mandalorian costuming forums on how to make your own girth belts. Yes, you can buy them. Yes, they're actually fairly inexpensive in the grand scheme of things, but some of us just like to make our own stuff. Okay, so material list. Cloth. Fairly heavy duty, something reasonably durable. Uh, it's not terribly expensive. You can get them at Walmart. We usually have to buy things at Walmart or Hobby Lobby here because that's all we have for sewing. Uh, she uses some heavy duty ironable interfacing, uh, just like I said, to give it a little bit of stiffness and a little bit of body. Nylon webbing. We use one inch and the appropriate size plastic or Kydex buckles. Um, there's a couple of different types of these. You can find these at Hobby Lobby. You can find them back by the uh, paracord bracers, which are also over by the leather working stuff, or you can find a different variety up by the sewing stuff. Velcro. We use a combination of industrial sticky and some of the sew-on stuff. The industrial sticky goes at the top of the cod piece, and the sew-on stuff goes at the bottom of the girth belt in the middle. Uh, we do this simply to keep the girth belt covering the cod piece, which is a Mandalorian Merc Costume Club requirement that the top of the cod piece be covered by the bottom of the girth belt. And last but not least, we use craft cord. This is six mil stuff. It is nine dollars at Hobby Lobby for 100 yards, and I am guessing. You will probably not all use all 100 yards. You can get it in a variety of colors. We used black for our kits. We've toyed with going with tan or red, but we always end up going back to black. Uh, this stuff is fairly easy to work with. It is easy to melt the edges, color fast, heat fusible. Uh, works pretty well, in our opinion. So I start by doubling over the interfacing and measuring up a piece that's just a little shorter than I want the girth belt to be tall cut it to the proper height. I measure the length and cut it to the proper length. This would have been easier to do by just doubling over a piece of cloth that is the right size, but I was trying to use up some of the scrap black material that we had, so instead of doing it the easy way, I made two pieces. Got it all cut. She lays the first piece flat out on the ironing board, irons it nice and flat, and then sticks the interfacing on top of that, and then slowly just starts folding the edge over and ironing it to the interface as she goes along. Once she's got the top edge done, she does the same thing with the bottom edge. Folds the side pieces in and irons those. She then takes the other piece of fabric, irons it smooth, and makes a crease along one of the long edges. Then compares the two pieces to figure out how much of a fold she needs on the other piece of material. And then folds and irons that piece along the edge. Lays the two pieces together and irons them together. This is where that fusible interfacing is nice because it actually sticks the two pieces together while she's sewing it even if it's only just a little bit. She then clips everything together and sews it up. You could use pins or whatever, or the interfacing may actually hold it. I don't know that she's ever tried, but she uses these little clips. So once everything is sewn together, she measures back a few inches from each edge and then starts laying out and cutting the craft cord to length. While she's laying this stuff out, she doesn't normally go all the way to the top and bottom of the fabric piece. She usually leaves a little bit of a gap, but if you wanted to do the whole thing, you could do the whole thing. She's got everything laid out and the cords cut to length. She makes these little envelopes, which are basically just the folded material, and then lays the cords out on the ends uh, very carefully and neatly uh, and folds these over top of them. 
And this just basically keeps the ends contained and makes it easier to control the craft cord while you're sewing them. Also keeps the fraying contained so that you don't have to melt each and every end. She pins the envelope around the ends of the craft cord. She then goes through and sews each one of the ends a couple of times, making sure to reverse back and forth a couple. Uh, you just want to make sure that everything is trapped inside the little envelopes and nice and secure. And I know it looks like the cord is going everywhere, but the nice thing about them with they trapped in the envelopes, as soon as she lays it out again, it'll be nice and straight. And lays those pieces out on top of the actual bottom of the belt and as I said before we leave a little bit of offset for the other side of the buckles so that there's a little bit of underlap overlap underlap uh, I don't know um, when you wrap the belt around yourself anyways stretches the belt out and pins those pieces together and then back to the sewing machine starts at one end and sews one end together in a couple of places I think she usually puts like two lines of stitches in there Once the ends are sewn out, she lays it out flat on the table, make sure everything is nice, stretched nice and tight, and the safety pins the cords to the belt at random intervals. Well, they're not actually random, they're set intervals. Uh, and then just goes through and puts a stitch in every so often to keep the cords laying all nice and straight. Okay, so that about wraps that up. For the most part, the only thing you didn't really get to see is the buckles. Uh, for the receiving end, uh, just double over a short section of nylon cord and stitch them at the end of one of the belt or one of the pieces. For the other end, we actually leave them back a little bit so that there's a section covering when you when you put it on, just a spare section. Uh, we then slide it through, double the end of the nylon cord over so that the buckle can't come off. And then sew the other side to the back piece. Uh, normally I will melt the edges so that they don't fray like this, but apparently I forgot to do this one, so don't forget. Uh, and outside of that, that takes care of that. Like I said, they're fairly inexpensive, doesn't require a, sewing, a big fancy sewing machine. My wife does these with her brother SE400, which is a small homeowner grade, uh, fairly inexpensive sewing machine. It sews right through the craft cord with very little problem. Um, they take weathering very well. Uh, I've used a combination of um, just spray paint and things like that. Uh, one of the other nice things about them is, is if you're looking for scorch marks and saber burns and those type of things, uh, you can heat up a metal rod or any piece of metal or something like that and lay it across there and it gives it kind of a nice melted effect. Be very careful, this stuff gets hot and it will burn and will leave scars if you get it on your skin. So keep that in mind when you're doing that, but I have actually found it to weather and work out fairly nice. Uh, I think that this is the system that we're going to continue to use for ours. Happy with it so far. Um, this is our third kit that we've used these for. Two of them are approved, so I know it works. And there we go. An easy but essential part of every Mandalorian kit. The girth belt. Have a great week.